many of you know, is a technology company, or at least uh, that's, I think, how you think of us. Uh, we see ourselves as an innovation company, largely, and we are very, very much committed to creating uh, transformative technologies that make the lives of billions of people uh, better. And some of those transformative technologies that we've created actually enable your businesses, search, analytics, uh, video, uh, ad serving, and uh, very much uh, you have incorporated those into the way you go about uh, your businesses. So we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, there is no question uh, that the world has changed. We know that Google is a catalyst for some of that technology change. And this technology has brought about profound changes, not only in business, society, culture, but also in behavior. Think about how technology has changed your lives. In, it's only been eight years now since the iPhone was first introduced. Uh, so this mini computer, this microcomputer in your pocket, in the pockets of more than 2.5 billion people around the world, uh, began as a device for calls and texts but it's now your in email inbox, your video and still camera, it's your music player, your social calendar, your alarm clock, your fitness tracker. It's your wayfinder for maps and directions, uh, for reminders and for shopping. It's your link to 1.5 million apps. It gives you access to all the world's information and it is seldom more than one meter away from your hand. In fact, if you're my 18-year-old daughter, it's glued to your hand. It's never out of your hand. Uh, it's probably furthest away when it's on the end of a selfie stick, and this is a new behavior that was mercifully uh, banned at Wimbledon this week. Happy to say it was a very good call by the officials. Uh, but technology has radically changed the way we as humans communicate, has forever changed the way brands communicate with their consumers. And the pace of change is accelerating uh, exponentially. Uh, you'll hear from Mark Curtis from Accenture in a little bit. He'll talk about the Internet of Things, which Accenture think of as living services. Uh, the Internet of Things is absolutely the third wave of the Internet. It's potentially just as important as desktop and mo mobile for business, and it's already happening in our lives. Now, who here remembers these lovely phone boxes uh, or carrying coins to call home or coins to feed a parking meter or having to memorize postcodes and phone numbers or reading weather forecasts for tomorrow in yesterday's paper that was printed that morning? That seems totally antiquated. Or my personal favorite is doing research using the De Dewey Decimal System, that lovely system of alphanumeric codes that allow you to walk into a library stack and find the book. Uh, this same child of mine who's 18, when she was 12, she learned about the Dewey Decimal System and she said, Mommy, did you really have to do research using this Dewey Decimal System? And I explained, yes, and if the library didn't have the book, you could drive to the next village and pick up the book possibly at that library if you called over to see if they had it. And she said, that is so Neanderthal. These behaviors seem positively quaint to our modern eyes, and entirely new behaviors have taken their place. The single biggest uh, behavior change is mobile. Humans now spend more time on mobile devices than they do on computers. Uh, the UK passed that threshold of more than 50% of search activity and more than 50% of YouTube view time that we can see are now taking place on uh, mobile devices. There's no going back. 71% of the UK uh, population owns a smartphone. 93% uh, of the under 35s have one. And if you're between the ages of 16 and 24, only 4% of you in this country do not have a smartphone. So the smart money in our business is on mobile. Projections for the UK's ad spend for this year uh, forecast mobile to be the third largest platform, uh, the largest medium after the internet and TV uh, for advertising. And um, Google's own analysis of search trends in the UK on Black Friday, yes, a lovely export from the United States back here to Great Britain is Black Friday, showed that uh, on apparel, 
55% of all queries for apparel on Black Friday came over mobile devices. IBM separately ran a, store, a study that showed nearly 60% of all search queries on Black Friday were on mobile, and 55% of spending happened um, on a mobile device. So we are here, it's outperforming the UK, not surprisingly, is already outperforming the United States. Now, mobile, it's a behavior. We should stop thinking of it as a device and start thinking of it truly as a behavior, a behavior that's changing us and the way we live. It means we're more spontaneous and opportunistic. It means we engage in smaller bursts of activity throughout the day. We are less prone to plan ahead. It means we can be and we are far more spontaneous. We change our minds at the last minute. And for brands, these want to check moments, these want to find, want to know, want to play, want to buy moments, these are all hugely valuable signals. They matter, they matter a great deal. Deloitte's research suggests that digital will influence 50% of UK in-store in retail uh, sales this year, with mobile alone influencing $50 billion of sales. So we did a little calculation. If you assume there are two and a half billion phones, uh, the world checks its mobile phones reasonably. This is a conservative number, more than 100 billion times a day. That's 100 billion moments uh, to understand consumers and to reach out to them uh, every single day. Uh, a large percentage of daily media uh, consumption has already shifted to screens and to digital screens in particular. And this creates a whole lot of new behaviors, second screening, dual screening. 54% of UK online users say they watch TV programs online on any device. Uh, this is both a mass behavior change and a very personal and individual change. Uh, we now customize the products and services we value. We are curating our digital identities. Uh, and in fact, 68% of people feel that their smartphone apps are a reflection of who they are as individuals, quite interestingly. Now, Grayson Perry, the Turner Prize winning artist, has observed that some of the most interesting stuff happens when we're not even paying attention. Things we are doing unconsciously when we're not making decisions. So these unexamined or natural choices say more about us uh, than uh, our most uh, overt statements of who we are. And for that reason, uh, at Google, understanding what people do is, we believe, the best way to understand who people really are. That's why we focus so much on behaviors at Google. These are the signals consumers leave all over the web. Uh, behavior is the signal, we believe, rather than the noise. Behavior provides insight into your consumers, who they are, what they're doing. And we actually see these behaviors, we understand them, we see them at massive scale and with remarkable precision. So Facebook may be about what people like, Amazon may be about what people buy, Apple might be about what people use, but Google, Google is about what people think and what people do. And because these behaviors signal the intentions that people have, it means in marketing, we're moving from the attention, the attention-getting economy, to the intention economy. From a focus on perceptions uh, to a focus on actions. And from interrupting people who are, doing, who are enjoying something to inviting people to do something they enjoy. Now, this is a whole new world in which to reimagine marketing. Now, at Google, we fundamentally believe uh, that search is a fundamental human behavior. Humans have always searched for things, for the essentials of life, food, water, and shelter, and for the existentials of life, music, poetry, and love. But what's different now is the absolute scale of that behavior and the observable scale of that behavior. Last year, the world made a trillion searches, a trillion searches for peace, love, science, and fiction. Now, would anyone here like to guess at the top question that we saw on Google last year, 2014? And no, it does not have Kardashian in the, in the query. Yes? What is love? You're absolutely correct. What is love was the most queried question on Google last year. 
It's fascinating, it gives me hope, and it's appro appropriate perhaps that we have Hannah Fry here, a mathematician, uh, who will tell us what we can learn from the mathematics of love. That's not really why Hannah is here. Uh, sh her views on how data insights can be applied to virtually any situation are fascinating and they're relevant for business. And then John Roberts is here with us. He's the CEO of Appliances Online, uh, one of the UK's great success stories, and a company that its customers love because when your dishwasher is broken, they show up, put in a new one, and haul away your old one, and they do it very reliably. Uh, so John will talk about how digital underpinned by data has empowered uh, AO's culture and burnished their reputation for truly amazing uh, customer service. In the everyday moments, our search behavior tells us quite a lot about everyday life events. Uh, take having a child, for example. Expectant parents perform twice as many searches as non-parents, and mobile is their screen of choice. There are times when they just want information, what to expect and what to prepare for, what to buy. But once that baby arrives, there are moments they need advice, they are looking for services, and we see uh, queries shift to cleaning, reusing baby clothes, or finding and renting push carts, push chairs, I'm sorry. Then the baby becomes a toddler, and the parents shift to searching for schools and eventually college. Now, whether it's new parents or students going through their degrees, families looking for elder care, couples looking to buy their first home, for these people, in those moments, Google becomes their proxy midwife, their tutor, their doctor, their estate agent, their lawyer, and yes, their friend. And we've all come to expect a tremendous amount from technology. Who here, like me, has flown coast to coast in the United States and availed themselves of go-go in flight? For 1995, you can be wired at 36,000 feet. And if you hit an air pocket above Utah and your wireless goes down, you get mad. You think, I paid $20 and my wireless isn't working. Meanwhile, you're hauling across the sky in a tin can. And it's remarkable what we expect. Even from our mobile devices now, we expect many moments of magic. And Google has worked very hard to provision some of these magic moments. Voice is the natural way we interact with our phone. Uh, that was the sole way we interact with them a long time, not too long ago. But now voice search, how many here actually conduct searches on Google using your voice on your mobile devices? Not enough of you. How many of you have downloaded the Google app you really should. Don't do it for Google. Do it for your life. The, you will never have to mistype. And Google has language recognition technology now that is 93% accurate, even for people who speak American English. Search has become more conversational. We don't just ask what anymore, but we also ask why, how, and where. And we see now from voice search is that queries have become much longer. They're conversational and they're largely location-based. So having your store locations, your opening hours, and a phone number on your mobile site is essential. And voice is not just powerful for search. Here's another little ditty. I want to run this video for you. Nope, didn't work. Wait for mommy, hang on. I like to pay with Google. Okay, Melanie. You're all set. Thank you. What do you say? Thank you. Hi. Welcome to Hands Free Payments. It's the latest way we're using technology to help people go about their day-to-day -day lives. This is a real product. It was announced at Google's I.O. in May, our large developer conference. Uh, it's rolling out in McDonald's in the United States. You will soon be able to pay with Google without even touching your smartphone just by activating it with your voice. So uh, in a little bit, you'll also hear from Geraldine Kalpin of Hilton. She's going to tell us how they, too, are using digital to help consumers, uh, consumers 
find them in our new and connected world using Google Search and Maps on mobile and desktop. Uh, Hilton helps customers book where and when they want to, and she'll also talk about their, one of their very cool apps, which uh, allows you to uh, view your room using Google Street View. It's kind of cool. So you can check out in virtual uh, sense what you'll be, where, the room you'll be staying in. Now we all live in a cross-device world. New mothers, for example, use mobile as a screen of choice. Uh, apps that can be used one-handed have become essential, as you saw in that last example. But she and her family also use other devices. And Google, uh, we are focused on really interpreting these signals across device, identifying the purchase paths and attributing value across different screens and touch points. And of course, she, like many of us in this room, are multitaskers with mobile close by at all times, including when we have the TV on. Almost a third of all people in the UK turn to a device for information or inspiration as an immediate or reflexive response to a TV show or a TV commercial. And so now you can, besides store visits and calls, you can add your TV spots to Google Analytics so that you can look at how all of your marketing mix works uh, together. And our own Jonathan Alfernes will talk about how Google's product solutions have evolved to make the most of this multi-device world we live in with mobile at the heart. And he'll look at how both apps and the web play a huge part in our thinking. Now, apps are really uh, eating the world. Uh, apps enable and enhance customer interactions, and we all move seam seamlessly between screens, sites, and apps. Uh, we don't discriminate. In fact, uh, their apps are an essential part of our daily life, not only Peter's tennis racket, but also his fitness tractor. People are spending an average of 30 hours per month inside apps. 47% of people in the UK have said they use an app when they want information quickly, as opposed to about 17% who prefer to use a mobile website. This means we as marketers have got to figure out it's vitally important to offer a fantastic user experience on desktop, on apps, and on the mobile web. And a great app should encourage brand interaction and keep customers coming back. But what happens when they stop coming back? or they forget about the app. So Jonathan will also talk about a very new uh, product coming out of Google called Ads in Apps on our Play Store where we have 1.5 million apps available. These are increasingly becoming sources of targeting and information and indexing that Google has uh, become very, very involved with indexing. Now one of our most popular apps of all of the Google suite of products is YouTube. 50% of all YouTube video views are happening on mobile devices. That's well more than 4 billion videos are viewed per day on mobile. And YouTube is really where the world goes uh, for entertainment, uh, to, for gaming, where you get your music fix and news and information and maybe where you go for a laugh or a comedy snack uh, or actually learn to cook. It's really whatever the world loves to do, You'll find it on YouTube. It is an eminently powerful search engine unto itself. It's a huge corpus of data, and marketers increasingly are turning to uh, uh, YouTube to interact with their consumers in moments uh, that matter to them. 91% of people are seeking out how-to websites on YouTube videos. Uh, it's a remarkable change in our behaviors. So I've covered a bit on um, mobile behavior, search behavior, entertainment behavior. What happens when you integrate signals across mobile video and search behaviors? Well, we can create a more precise understanding of what people do and what they want. Programmatic buying allows us to co uh, target consumers very precisely based on a collection of observed behavioral data from their last 30 days across the web. Again, we're not talking about inferred preferences here or claimed behavior. This is actual but anonymized digital behavior. And now marketers can measure conversions using a double click that start as a click on one device and end with a conversion on another uh, for all their campaigns across the web, not just those uh, uh, with the ads they buy on Google domains. 
So it's crazy how many signals we can get in a nanosecond, every single second around the world. There are 44,000 Google searches, 5,000 Facebook status updates, 90,000 YouTube video views, and 7,000 tweets. So those four sources alone provide 146,000 audience signals per second. Now it takes a large computational system, such as Google operates, to combine and consolidate as much of that as possible across YouTube, Google search, third party, your own CRM systems, and your website to give you a single view of your consumer. And this vast amount of audience behavior data, or signals as we call them, will become even stronger as we start to integrate uh, signals from wearables, connected TVs, and connected homes. Just imagine the precision. Uh, with which you can serve creative messaging with that kind of intelligence, delivering that kind of relevance. And it will mean that as marketers, you can buy the exact and appropriate audience you want to, rather than the approximate audience you have to, or you have had to in, in the past. So later on this morning, Emily Sears is going to talk uh, about how Google is walking its own walk uh, on programmatic with our own marketing spend. You'll have a little live case there. So I've spent some time setting up connections between Google and human behaviors. Why? Why have we done that? Because really, Google is about behaviors at scale. We understand these behaviors at scale. We can help you uh, know a lot about your audiences, what people do, when and where, and on what devices. We have access to these signals across all these moments and these touch points. And the better you understand these signals, the more you will win the moments that matter for your brands with your customers. I believe there's never been a more exciting time to be in marketing. Um, we're delighted to partner with all of you in reimagining marketing and making it uh, a next generation practice area. Thank you.